How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. Today I'm here to talk to you about all grain mashing. Now I know, I know that this can seem really intimidating uh, and full of expensive equipment for those people that haven't tried it before or haven't looked into it a whole lot. So today we're doing a 101, a introduction to all grain mashing for distillers and it's really not that hard guys basically all we're doing is taking this using these and turning it into this i know that sounds really cryptic but trust me guys it'll make sense in a bit <laughs> Welcome to Stella everyone, I'm Jesse and this channel is for those people that want to chase the craft of home distillation and want to make it a legitimate hobby. So if you're one of those chasers guys and that sounds good to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell and you won't miss anything. So I put down a all grain wash last week and that was a all grain peated Irish whiskey and there was a lot of people that sort of basically said that although the video was fun to watch and they enjoyed the idea of it they had no idea what was going on and i'm sorry guys i didn't have time to really go in and break things down during that video so i wanted to go back i wanted to take a step back and make an overview a 101 for distilling to show you guys that it's really not that it's really not that crazy okay so this video is not going into the weeds on specific techniques instead it's a primer for what's to come guys watching this video is going to make understanding the specific step-by-step -step instructions we talk about in other videos a whole lot easier to watch. If you're an experienced all grain brewer or distiller, I would thoroughly appreciate you watching this video and dropping some comments down below for those guys that are newer than you. All right, team, here's the plan. We're gonna run through a few things. Number one, I wanna get some definitions out of the way. So the rest of this video and the rest of all grain brewing make sense to you. Number two, we're going to go back to this little silly example that I've got here for you. Number three, we're going to talk about all the things that you need for an all grain mash. And number four, we're going to talk about the process itself. Sweet. The obvious thing that we need to define first is what on earth is a mash, right? All it is is soaking grain in hot water in the presence of en enzymes to take the starch and break it down into maltose which our yeast can convert into alcohol. Now, I know guys, there's a few words in there that might be new to you, so let's have a look at those too, all right? An enzyme is a little protein that acts as a catalyst for a chemical reaction, and for us brewers and distillers, the thing we're talking about here is a enzyme that will take the starch, the carbohydrate in the grain, and break it down into more simple sugars, which our yeast can eat later on. So essentially without the enzymes, none of this stuff works. They're the key to the whole process. It is worth noting here that there is a whole host of enzymes present in a mash. But at this stage, I don't think it's worth going into that. It's really not something that, especially as distillers, we don't really need to know about right now. Just be aware that they do exist, okay? Next up, you heard me mention maltose, which is, as I said before, a simple sugar. And it is basically the favorite food of Saccharomyces or brewer's yeast. So we want to create as much of that as we possibly can to give to our yeast so it can create that beautiful alcohol for us. Next up is malted grain. Malted grain is grain that has been soaked in water, it's been germinated, it's allowed to start growing, and then that process is halted by gently kilning it or roasting it for want of a better word. The idea here is that we're creating a grain that's full of the enzymes we talked about earlier on uh, because that is what the seed uses to break down its food source essentially back into sugar so the plant can grow. We're hijacking that process, we're keeping the starch and we're keeping the enzymes so we can use it for our purposes. Seeing as we're talking about malted grain right now, I think it's worth talking about diastatic power too. Diastatic power is essentially the measurement of the amount of enzymes that is in the malted grain. That's important later on if you're mashing something that isn't malted and doesn't have its own enzymes. You can borrow the excess enzymes from the malted grain to convert the unmalted grain as well. 
I know this is I know this might be getting a little bit much for you guys feel free to rewind it and watch this again if it is for those of you that have experienced this before you're getting pissed off at me for taking too long <laughs> <laughs> lastly I want to talk about gelatinization any grain that is malted has already been gelatinized you don't have to worry about it but if you're dealing with raw grains especially you need to gelatinize them before you can mash them essentially all that means is that you're using heat and water to loosen up the ball of carbohydrates so the enzymes can actually get to it and do their work on it so that is why you need to cook corn before you make a corn mash anyway team there's a whole lot of other words that you'll probably run into as you're looking into this stuff but those are the core words that will get you started like i said if some of that was a bit weird for you rewind watch it again if you can get those words nailed and understand them in your head the whole rest of the process is going to open up in front of you speaking of which let's go back to this <laughs> because this is going to outline the process for us nicely this tangled ball of string represents the carbohydrates found in the grains when they're raw before they've been malted or gelatinized or anything like that essentially our job as brewers as all grain brewers or distillers that are doing all grain mashes is to take this giant tangled big ass molecule and break it down into much smaller pieces that the yeast can eat I'm guessing you've probably guessed that this <laughs> the scissors are the enzyme but the problem is when it's like this it's pretty hard to find the end of the string to start snipping little bits off it right that's why we need the starch to be gelatinized so once it's gelatinized it relaxes it opens up and it exposes the ends of that carbohydrate to the enzyme so they can start working on it so once we have these gelatinized starches and water that's the right temperature the enzymes can come along and start snipping off the simple sugars off the ends of those chains now like I mentioned before guys there is a whole lot of different enzymes that all do a slightly different job but but for the purposes of this I really don't think we need to go into that and this is the sort of stuff talking about all of these different enzymes and stuff that I think maybe scares off uh, new people that want to get into this sometimes because it is really it is really complicated there's a lot of science behind this but at the end of the day you don't actually need to know all of this stuff to get a good result especially especially if you're distilling oh okay guys I want to jump in here real quick because I need to say a huge thank you to all the patreons kicking over here thank you for the new patreons as well just to remind you guys these lists get updated once a month so your name will be on there soon but thank you guys i appreciate your contribution to the channel the only reason still it's still going and the only reason that still it's sort of expanding and and winding up a little bit of speed is because of you guys so honestly team thank you i appreciate it so anyway team let's move on to the things we actually need for an all grain mash and then we can talk about the process a little bit cool so those things are one gelatinized starch two enzymes three hot water at the right temperature four something to hold all of those things in five bit of elbow grease and some time and six a way to separate the grains from the liquids if you decide to do that <laughs> the gelatinized the gelatinized starch comes from malted grains if you just buy malted grains you're absolutely golden number two the enzymes if you just bought the brewer's malt you're fine you don't need anything else they've got more than enough enzymes in it to go but just so you know you can decide to go down the route of buying enzymes in a bottle if you wish that is not overly popular for home brewers making beer but there are a whole lot of distillers that do it and swear by it the hot water if you've got a way to heat up hot water you're golden and uh, in this day and age I find it hard to believe that you don't <laughs> time if you don't have time this is the wrong hobby for you you need to quit now <laughs> should probably take my own advice on that one <laughs> all right guys so I think you've probably got the picture by now but I'm going to go through the process anyway to help drive this home uh, and once again team if you run into some words you don't understand go back to the beginning of the video and check it out there if I've forgotten to define something back up there drop a comment down below I'll be happy to let you know what any of these words are 
Uh, and if I don't do it, I'm sure there'd be people that are more equipped to do it hanging around in the comments anyway. All right, team, so we have grain. And for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to assume that it is all gelatinized and it is all malted grain or brewer's specialty grain, simply because that honestly is the easiest way to get into this stuff. All right, so you take that grain and you need to grind it. You need to cut, cut it down into smaller bits. I use a malt muncher, there's a couple of videos on my channel about that. But the idea is that you just need to get the surface area down so that the water can soak into everything and the enzymes have access to everything. If you're gonna be using a three vessel system, you have to be careful not to crack it too much because the grain itself basically ends up being the thing that filters the wort. If you're putting it through a muslin bag or you are fermenting on the grains, not so much of a big deal. You can grind finer and get a better result in terms of more sugars at the end. Next up, we have to decide the temperature that we're gonna mash at. And if you're distilling, I would suggest aiming for sort of somewhere between 61 and 63 degrees Celsius. That's gonna give you a super fermentable wort, uh, basically meaning that the yeast can eat everything. Now what we need to do now is decide on the strike temperature, another word I haven't defined. The strike temperature is the temperature of the water before you put it into the grain and mix it up. <laughs> and we need to decide on that temperature because when you add it into the grains and mix it up, obviously the grains itself have a thermal mass and it is at a temperature lower than that of the water, so it's gonna drop your temperature down. If, for example, you're using sort of two to one water to grain, which isn't a horrible place to start, you're aiming for 61 degrees, the grain's 18 degrees-ish, off the top of my head, I'm going to say you're aiming for 69 degrees Celsius, something like that for your strike water. But there is a whole lot of calculators online for that, so don't stress it too much. Now, you do not need to be able to work it out yourself. Next, you heat the water and you either add the water to the grain or the grain to the water. But the goal here is to mash in, which means combining the water and the grain, without getting dough balls. The easiest way to do that is honestly to add the grain to the water nice and slowly and mix the crap out of it along the way. After mashing in, you kick back, you relax, and you wait for however long you're going to wait to let the enzymes convert. If you're using supplies from the homebrew store, honestly guys, with those things, 90% of the conversion will happen in 15 minutes flat. It is insane how well modified those malts are these days. If you're using unmodified, grains or less modified grains, if you're using raw grains and stuff like that, uh, you're going to need a good long while. But even in the homebrew world team, an hour mash is pretty much standard. At the end of the mash, you may want to test to see if you have full conversion, and the easiest way to do that is with an iodine test. Once again, I'm not going into that now, but I will make a video on it soon, I promise you guys. If I do not do it soon, pester me for it if you want to see it. <laughs> Long story short, as soon as you're happy that you've got full conversion, you can mash out. Or if you're fermenting on the grain, obviously you can skip this step. All mashing out means is getting the liquid out of the grain and getting as much of the sugar in the grain as you can get. There's a few different ways to go about this. The first being is if you're doing the bag method, you can literally strain it through the bag. Some home brewers will tell you that may make it astringent. Personally, I actually haven't run into that problem myself, uh, but I think for distilling it's kind of a non-issue anyway. Number two, you can sparge the grain, which essentially means washing the grain with fresh water to get more sugar out of it. Once again, that's a full-on uh, homebrew method, and if you want to look into that more, check it on the homebrew forums. But once again, I'll plan on making a video for you on that in the future. Once you've done that, the mash is over, you're done. You're into the territory of deciding whether or not you're going to boil or getting the temperature down low enough to pitch your yeast. So there we go team, I hope that that made it seem a little bit less scary for you. If it made it sound more scary, I'm not doing my job very well and I apologize for that. At the end of the day team, if you spend an hour or two researching this, watch a couple of videos like this, watch some home brewing videos, don't get hung up on the geekery that happens there team, seriously you don't need it for distilling and you can learn that later on if you want to. But if you put in an hour or two, there, there is literally like a 99% success rate for getting something that will ferment at the end of your first all grain mash. So I want to really encourage you guys to look into it. It is an insanely 
insanely satisfying thing to do you feel like a wizard you feel like it's uh, it's alchemy or something like that and i really encourage you guys to give it a go i think that it'll add a whole lot to your home distilling hobby all right team i hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope it sets you up uh, to better enjoy and understand the videos that are all coming up i'm excited about those if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you really like the video and you're not subscribed yet, do so down below. Make sure you leave me a comment to ask any questions or give any feedback. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!